Hi, my name is Matt Shaw from CAC Gas and Instrumentation. As part of our ongoing series of videos, today we'll be taking a look at our range of gas distribution systems that are used alongside docking stations to calibrate or bump test your gas detection devices. A gas distribution system is simply a method of transferring gas mixtures from one location to another through a system of regulators, tubing and outlet panels. This could be from a single gas cylinder or multiple cylinders to one or more testing points or docking stations. There are many benefits in using a gas distribution system. Overall, it improves the efficiency and effectiveness of your calibration and bump test programs. It does this by reducing your operating costs simply due to the cost per litre savings of using larger cylinders. The price per litre of gas is drastically reduced as you increase your cylinder size. Assuming you have correctly calculated the total gas volume required annually, this is the simplest and quickest way to reduce operating costs. Of course, using larger cylinders also means having to order them less frequently, further reducing your purchasing costs through associated savings on shipping and handling. The GDS offers the opportunity to store your gas cylinders outside. This provides a significant boost in OH&S, especially if stored in a lockable cage. Safety benefits aside, simply having to connect and disconnect less gas cylinders allows for less human intervention, eliminating possible errors and mistakes. Finally, a GDS allows the user to have continuously running system, reducing downtime, providing a greater compliance to company calibration, bump test protocols and providing a safer workplace for everyone. In part one, we discuss the benefits of using a gas distribution system, GDS for short. Now we're going to take a look at the key elements in designing a GDS. A GDS can be as simple as a cylinder, regulator and a piece of tubing, or can be more involved with outlet panels, specialised hardware and specialised regulators. To design a GDS, we need to completely understand the customer's application for calibration and bump testing. This information provides details to choose the correct cylinder size, as well as the correct material for your hardware and regulators to maximise the efficiency of the system. A GDS consists of a gas cylinder, a cylinder mount regulator, some hosing and tubing to an outlet panel, which can now connect down to your testing point or docking station. The key information that is required to design the system includes gas mixture and gas consumption detail, customer calibration and bump test procedures or protocols, the gas mixture's corrosive nature or non-corrosive nature, the distance of the gas cylinders to the docking stations and how many docking stations the customer requires. Firstly, we need to determine the gas mix type and volume that the customer will consume. To do this, you need to know the type of gas mixture required, what type and the amount of instruments the customer has, and how often they're calibrating or bump testing them. Using the CAC gas calculator, simply enter the relevant information in the boxes provided. Enter the number of instruments. For calibrations, enter the flow rate. Enter the duration. Enter the frequency. For bump tests, also enter the flow rate, the duration and the frequency. The gas calculator will automatically calculate the annual gas usage of the customer. If this was for a four gas mixture with a two year shelf life, simply double this number in order to find out what the most efficient cylinder size would be for the application. For this example, a 1500 litre cylinder would be the correct choice. Now that we know the total volume of gas to be consumed over one or two years, we can choose the most efficient cylinder size for the current fleet of instruments. Remembering that cost per litre is decreased as cylinder size is increased, choosing the correct cylinder size is imperative in maximising the efficiency of your calibration gas program. The key decision making criteria for materials is whether or not the gases are corrosive or non-corrosive. This will determine whether or not we use stainless steel, nickel plated brass or brass for our regulators and hardware, and whether or not we use Teflon or Tigon tubing. Non-corrosive gases include CO, CO2, nitrogen, zero air. These gases can use brass or nickel plated brass and standard Tigon tubing. Please remember that nickel plated brass is suitable for H2S and SO2 in concentrations below 50 ppm. Corrosive gases including chlorine, Ammonia, NO, NO2 require the use of stainless steel materials and Teflon tubing. Standard Tigon tubing is not satisfactory for these gases as the gas will actually adsorb on the inside of the tubing and you'll get little to no gas concentration at the end of your line. Material selection is very important. 
Even a short piece of the incorrect tubing can impact the measurement results. For more information on this topic, please see our blog, Material Selection for Tubing and Regulators. The distance between the docking stations and the gas cylinder will help to determine the regulator types, panel requirements and your tubing. Soft tubing is satisfactory for lengths less than 3 metres. Rigid or flexible stainless steel tubing must be used for any distance over 3 metres. Anything that's longer than 3 metres will require an outlet panel connected to your stainless steel hosing as concerns of gas permeation through soft tubing and pressure drops over distance. The type of docking station will determine whether or not you need to use a pressure regulator or demand flow regulator. Any docking station with an internal pump will require a demand flow regulator. A docking station with an internal flow regulator or pressure system will require a pressure regulator. All regs are available in stainless steel, nickel plated brass or brass based upon the corrosive nature of the gas mixture. Outlet panels can be designed for any application with no limit to the number of docking stations they can support. Outlet panels are used to deliver the gas mixture or mixtures to two or more docking station systems and or where the distance is greater than three metres. When an outlet panel is used, a local regulator will be installed in the panel to provide flow or pressure to the docking station. The GDS's outlet panels can be expanded to almost any number of outlets. A single dual outlet panel can support up to 20 docking stations, two panels with four outlets can support up to 40 docking stations, and three panels with six outlets could support up to 60 docking stations, and so on and so on. A GDS consists of a gas cylinder, a cylinder mount regulator, some hosing and tubing to an outlet panel, which can now connect down to your testing point or docking station. The key information that is required to design the system includes gas mixture and gas consumption detail, customer calibration and bump test procedures or protocols, the gas mixture's corrosive nature or non-corrosive nature, the distance of the gas cylinders to the docking stations, and how many docking stations the customer requires. Let's now take a look at a few different ways in which you can set up a GDS to suit your specific application. Please note this list is not exhaustive. The GDS can be customised in many different ways to suit many different applications, but this is just some of the most common ways. The simplest of all systems is a short run system, ideal for applications where your gas cylinder is going to be sitting right beside your testing point or docking station. If your docking station uses an internal pump, all you will need is a gas cylinder, a demand flow regulator and some soft tubing to connect directly to your docking station. If your docking station however requires pressure, you'll need a gas cylinder, a pressure regulator, some stainless steel tubing and a valve assembly kit. The valve assembly kit has a C10 outlet mimicking the same valve that's on your disposable cylinder that you're currently screwing into your docking station. Simply screw that into your docking station and you're away. If you would like to store your gas cylinders outside the room or at a greater distance than 3 metres, a long run system will be required. A long run system consists of a gas cylinder, a pressure regulator, stainless steel tubing, either flexible or rigid, and an outlet panel. Here is where you'll screw in your point of use regulators and some soft tubing to connect down to your docking station. Again, if your docking station is pumped, simply screw in the ODFR to the outlet panel. If your docking station requires pressure, then simply use a fixed flow regulator and also screw this into the front of your outlet panel. In the case of a large fleet of instruments, the GDS can be expanded to suit. The design of the system is essentially the same as the long run system we've just looked at. The only difference being we just need to expand the amount of outlet panels that we use. A dual outlet panel such as this one can support 20 docking stations, a triple outlet panel could do 30 and so on and so on. If the fleet of instruments require a number of different gas mixtures from different cylinders, we simply need to use the same setup as the long run system, but duplicate or triplicate the setup at its input. Once the gas reaches the outlet panel, it's just a matter of determining which gases you want to come from which outlets. For example, you may want to use a four outlet panel, one for NO2, one for CO2, and the remaining two for a four gas confined space entry mix. 
This brings us to the end of our video on the gas distribution systems. If you have any more questions or require further information on how to design a gas distribution system for your calibration gas program, please download the GDS ebook from our website or visit the blog at the link below. Thanks for watching.